go into me now to talk about iPad stuff. Most, I think, if not <laughs> this everything, should take more than thirty seconds. Is well, you missed one big <laughs> thing, Lewis. You missed one big thing. I did. What? What? Well, maybe two big things. The first big thing. How about a big calculator, Lewis? A big old calculator. <laughs> Come into the iPad. I already use CalcBot, so whatever. I don't think I really need a calculator, but I know a lot of people don't want to pay for it, so whatever. Now you have a calculator app coming to the iPad with a bunch of new math features, which looked pretty cool. Uh, it has a math notes feature that takes advantage of Apple Pencil, allowing users to type or write out mathematical expressions and see them uh, instantly solved in their own handwriting. Man, that was some... We're not even... We can't even... Scrape. They had almost two hours of succinct video editing to get all these features out there. There's no way we could possibly even cover all these. But like the handwriting features that they showed where you could like scribble out notes and have them be deleted. Oh, yeah. Or that looked awesome. Or do math problems finally and have caught them up to be the solved. Newton in 1994 on that regard. Oh, jeez. Yeah, it's, it's like the Newton, but better. But there's just all sorts of cool stuff that they built in uh, that I think are going to make using an Apple Pencil on the iPad way more compelling. Like if you were in school and you were like taking notes, you could solve math problems within your notes. That seems like it'd be kind of useful. You're also getting the uh, the Calc app, as I mentioned. But one of the big things that no one is talking about, that I was stunned that no one's even mentioning, are the new AirPlay features that allow you to take control of another person's device and finally fix things remotely. That has been so sorely needed for so many years. I mean, not so there's two features that they highlighted. Like you, you could draw on their screen, which that alone is hugely helpful. And just be like, hey, <laughs> click on that. It's but then this one here. <laughs> to take it to the next level and have you just be able to request control of another person's iPad or iPhone and just do the changes for them, I'm actually not sure if this is a good or a bad thing because now – my parents can call me and say, fix my <laughs> iPad. Right now, they just don't even bother because like, he's not coming over to fix my iPad today. But now they wow. will learn that they can do it remotely. So an immensely useful, helpful feature for the IT people, those of us out there that are our family's IT people, like being able to do this. Now, I didn't see that this feature was added to uh, Mac OS Sequoia. I'm presuming that it it's is. It's already in there. Is it? You can take control it's of the person's there for Mac? Years. Yeah. Okay. I, I guess I never get asked to fix anyone else's Mac. So it's only iPads because all my family has iPads. So being able to do that is going to be uh, immensely helpful. I think that's it. it. Yeah. Is it just iPad or is it also iPhone? It's, it's iOS and iPadOS. Yeah, it's okay. both. Um, they, they, had to, they had to put something in the iPad section, you know. <laughs> yeah, if you go saw... to the Apple website <laughs> showing the features for like Mac OS, iPad OS, <laughs> iOS, it's it, the, all the pages look exactly the same. They're all getting the same features, which I believe is a point for me. So, <laughs> actually, I can't remember how I voted, so I I don't well, know. 